Good afternoon. In Israel, the U.S. President Joe Biden has been meeting with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu after that massive explosion that led to 500 people being killed at the Al Ahli Baptist Hospital. Palestinians say Israel was responsible for this and that it was a deliberate attack, part of a wave of attacks Israel has launched against Gaza in the last week. As a result, Jordan has cancelled a summit that was going to host Biden in Jordan. Israel says this explosion was caused by what they call a failed rocket launch by an Islamic militant group. Biden says he believes it seems the explosion came from what he called the other side, or the other team. In other words, not from Israel. That's Biden's claim. Naeem Jina is a senior researcher at the Mapam Gubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection. Naeem, good afternoon to you. Many different and many difficult elements to this. The first is that no one is taking responsibility for what happened, for killing 500 people. How can we assess what happened here? Well, there was responsibility taken immediately after it happened. Uh, a tweet by the digital spokesperson for Netanyahu, as well as the Israeli Defense Force, uh, the Israeli Defense Force one in Arabic, uh, both kind of gloated about, uh, uh, about this uh, attack on a terrorist installation, as they called it. And then both t uh, tweets were deleted a little while later, and the, the denials were, uh, were issued. Let me also say that according to the United Nations, from the 7th of October, um, when this episode started, um, the United Nations says that Israel has targeted 58 different health facilities in, in Gaza. So um, this wasn't unusual in being targeted. It was unusual in the large number of people that were killed. Also that Israel over the past five, six days has been uh, warning and instructing hospitals in the north of Gaza to be evacuated or or people would be bombed in them. So they were identified to be targeted, and people were told to leave. If they didn't leave, they would get bombed in them, and then this happened. I mean, with all of this context, we now have Joe Biden saying that it appears it wasn't the Israelis. Is he basing that on evidence, or just that Israel is his friend? Well, I think the latter, but also when you look at the interview, Stephen, he, uh, well, not the interview, the, the, uh, the media conference that he and Netanyahu gave, he looked a little, frankly, a bit uncomfortable. Um, even his use of language, he said, you know, it's, um, it's the other team, but we'll see what happens or something like that. Um, as if he wasn't quite sure himself. But the other thing, of course, about Biden's statements is that he said, according to what I've seen, um, you know, it's the other team. But just three, four days, no, four, five days ago, he said that he saw pictures of decapitated babies. And within hours, the White House had to um, issue a statement saying, actually, the president didn't see any such pictures. And then by the next day, all the media that had reported that were, uh, were saying that it wasn't true. So can we really believe when he says, from what I've seen, when he said that before and it had to be walked back? An immediate consequence of all of this is that Jordan cancelled its hosting of Biden. So it obviously believes Israel is responsible. And it looks at the context that you've pointed to as well. So now, Naeem, is this going to be one of those situations where everyone has a fight about who caused the hospital explosion? There's no search towards peace. There's no taking of responsibility. Um, and in some cases, when people deny acts of violence like this, it allows them to get away with it. Yes, I, I mean, uh, first thing on, on the on the summit that was cancelled, um, I, I think this is uh, you know in in a in a week and a half or two weeks of uh, unprecedented things happening. This certainly is one of those. Um, Arab leaders, um, unelected Arab leaders, I should say, who snubbed the U.S. president is not something that happens normally. Um, Abbas last night just flew back. Uh, then the King of Jordan said the summit's not going to happen. Um, so that, that in itself is, uh, uh, is, is a strong thing. But of course, in, in, in all of those cases, whether it's uh, um, uh, Abbas or King Abdullah of Jordan or Sisi of Egypt, um, they're not responding just because they think that uh, Israel might be responsible. I mean, this, you know, uh, in the past they didn't respond in this strong a way. But the protests in their own countries, in the West Bank, um, last night, there were protests where people were calling for the president to fall. Um, in Jordan, there's been massive protests uh, since last week. Uh, in Egypt, smaller, but, but happening as well. Um, so in all of these cases, they, they're responding to their own streets. 
on your on your second question on your last question um yeah i mean I, there's not going to be i don't think uh, immediately any acceptance of responsibility um the i'm taking perhaps some hope from uh, from uh, Biden's body language and the funny way in which he spoke uh, to suggest that maybe the Americans will um, find out uh, who the real culprit was and then put some pressure on Israel in order to uh, calm down their, their attack. Um, I think that, you know, that, that might be, I hate to say it in this way, but that might be the only kind of positive result uh, of this attack and of 500 people being killed. Um, the insistent by, insistence by the Americans that there needs to be some way in which the humanitarian disaster is alleviated, perhaps the opening of the corridors that has been suggested in the Russian resolution yesterday at the Security Council, which was vetoed, and then the... Uh, Brazilian resolution, which will go tonight to the Security Council, which perhaps uh, might get passed. Um, and if that happens, I think that that will at least be something of uh, um, kind of relief for uh, people in Gaza who, you know, 2.3 uh, 2 million people squeezed into 360 square kilometers and now forced to squeeze into an even smaller area. Um, so, I mean, the next, I mean, there are different sort of ways of looking at what the next move is. Um, uh, Israel obviously holds all the military cards here. Um, and so the, the question is, will they send ground troops into, into Gaza? Uh, Biden seems to have said publicly before he went to Israel, before this explosion, I think if I've got the timeline correct, that that would be a very bad idea. I presume behind closed doors he'll say the same thing to Netanyahu. I think so. Um, I think that uh, each day that passes the possibility of uh, ground invasion decreases uh, for a couple of reasons. One is a reason that has been there already, which is that the Israelis know very well um, in 2014 when they sent in ground troops that uh, there was an ambush uh, in, uh, in, in Gaza and they lost many troops in that. Uh, this time around, now um, nine years later, the, uh, the, the Palestinian resistance seems to be much stronger than it was in 2014. So the, the much greater care will have to be taken in how that happens. But the other thing is that, um, you know, if we compare Biden's speech, uh, his first two speeches where he didn't mention Palestinians at all, and then slowly uh, both him and his national security advisor, etc., Palestinians began to feature in their statements to the, the comment that he made, the one that you referred to. Um, I think behind closed doors, uh, there's going to be a lot of focus uh, from Biden on the humanitarian situation and that uh, something needs to be done to um, to, to uh, kind of de-escalate. Um, and, and I think that uh, my suspicion is that there are not going to be uh, ground troops that will be sent in. Naeem Gina, thank you. Senior researcher at the Mapungubwa Institute for Strategic Reflection. Really do appreciate the time.